What is going on, IK fam? BN, I'm back again today with another Dope Sauce video. And we're going to be taking a look at the new version 1.1 preview update that is going to be coming out m maybe next week, right? We'll have to see. So I'm here in the Pioneer server right now. And you can see from here, right on the kind of update notes, I imagine these might be just be a light version of the patch notes that we'll probably eventually see posted. Maybe there could be more things, maybe there might be more detail, but this is just a quick overview summary. We're going to go through everything one by one, and I'll give you my feedback on them, along with a special... I don't want to say special, but I want to say like a really heartfelt piece of feedback that I'm going to have at the end of the video. And as always, guys, if you enjoy the content, right, give us a sub, hit that bell for notifications. You guys can always check out our official Infinity Kingdom resources down below in the description, um, along with a special channel support link to download the game if you want. It's at the top of the description down below. Let's dive in. So here we go. First thing is Goddess Festival. Norheim will host the Goddess Festival. This is probably just going to be another one of the seasonal or special events that we've heard about previously that's going to come out. Number two, bubble emojis and text emojis to enrich your interactive experience on the world map. There are six kinds of bubble emojis and 36 kinds of text emojis for you to express yourself. So I imagine this might be when... I know it said world map, so I don't know if that means world chat or if it actually means like my emojis here when I oh cool special emoji thing oh this is pretty cool so they added a bunch in they have text ones oh this is nice I can maybe do some customizations here is that right let's go settings emoji six how do I can I unlock more okay cool 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 so I can actually edit these and oh cool 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 so i have to click on let's see this thing on use oh, okay then i have to select what i want to replace with okay cool 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 this is awesome right i'm sure they're going to add more of these two as well uh man wow okay this is really cool right this is awesome if you want to use these now something that we usually seen in something like rock right where you're able to do that with the march when you're going out so that could be cool as well uh let's test real quick i think i have one march let's just see if we can do that so let's send a march let's click on our march once it actually gets far enough outside. Oh, cool. I can do it on my March, too. Okay, dope. Cool, cool, cool. Not that I... Oh, it's even a little animated. Oh, what? All right. I'm loving it. Okay, cool. Uh, next thing is Alliance customized chat groups. Alliance leaders are able to create chat groups. This is a big win for me. Uh, right, This is something we've advocated for and have talked about in our last... In our big uh, round one suggestions and feedback video that we did a couple ago on the channel. Right, And now what you could do is I can go in... Uh, and do this. I can go Alliance group chat, right? Only leaders can create though, right? So I can't do that. The The cool thing is I like that I can do that because I could do that for my officers to have a dedicated in-game officer chat. I can do that for my big players that are above garrison powers for upcoming cities so I can organize times for the big guys to be on or girls in this case. Shout out to Andromeda, my homegirl. And then in addition to that, right, I can create chat groups for specific members of my alliance for anything. The one thing I will say is I love the start to the idea. To build on it, I do think maybe the next step would be to allow anyone to create a group chat uh, in-game. Um, and I think that would be fantastic to be able to do, right? Doing something like adding a friends list in-game, right? Where you have to add players if you want to uh, create a group chat, maybe for people outside of your alliance. Or you just do it in general and have that be the default, right? The standard going forward. Uh, but regardless, still a good addition. I do like it. The next one is Mayor. Added Mayor position in the city. So this is not that descriptive, right? So there's not too much detail here. So essentially what it is, and this is actually a great plus in my opinion, they've added an, a title position to standard cities, right? Which is great because you were only able to get them in capitals before. So when I click on a regular city, a non-capital city, you'll notice that there's a mayor position. If I click on this, I can now assign a title, right? Now... I imagine that the person who's assigning the title is the leader of that city to whomever they want, right? Now, I don't know if there's different titles, right? That's a level four city. That gives us training speed. Let's see what this one gives us. This one gives us, oh, 3% training speed. Okay, here, let's just check. Let's do a high level city non-capital just to confirm. Okay, cool. So 3% training speed seems to be the base. Uh, but again, right, it's a free buff. Can't be mad at that. Uh, so I do like I do like the addition. A market, add in immortals, refresh probabilities in the market. So I don't really know exactly what this is as far as like how it's going to look. You're, you're going to have to test this out on your account once the update hits to really see. I did try this a, a little bit ago and I didn't really notice anything worth showing. But what I will tell you is there actually is a new immortal, an elite immortal, a purple one that they didn't put in the update notes, right? And I'm going to show this to you. So on my main, if I go to fire, 
there's an immortal here that's not open yet. If I go back to the beta server, you will see that I go to gallery, I go to fire, and I'll go back Edward. So they added in a new elite, and he's actually a free-to-play, right? So you don't have to spend anything to get him, which is awesome. And uh, I'll, here, I'll show off. Let me see if I can show off what his skill is real quick, just so you guys can see before we move on. So we can click on Edward. Oh, God, I can't click on Edward from there. Uh, let's do this. We'll scroll down. Here we go. So, yeah, Hall of Martin Market. Okay, so here's the skill. Increases your physical damage by 12%, attack speed, uh, and attack, and attack speed for 6 seconds, right? So I, I think it's decent, right? We'll have to see how he works into fire. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a quick preview. Now, the next one is Alliance Over Ranking. Added the active ranking cont uh, contribution ranking in the original Alliance Ranking Entrance. That's a mouthful, but essentially they added one of the most important things that I love about this update, because this is something that we advocated for as well in our feedback and suggestions video is they allowed for you to have individual member rankings for your alliance right this is really cool right so look uh, alliance activity right this rates your activity points based on uh the from all the daily login right your resource gathering boss defeating uh tech research building right so i'm imagining what they're doing here is they're taking your activity points from the here we go from the daily right? So your activity points that you get, right? You can max out at like whatever it is, 115, something like that, right? They're taking this and, and giving it, right? So you can gauge the activity for uh, your members in your alliance. I think this is a great addition. I don't know if it resets uh, or not. I think it'd be cool if it maybe reset weekly or something like that. Um, if you could, right? You have tech donations. So you could see who's at the top of your tech donation bar. Um, again, right, I don't know if this resets at all. I would, I would love to see something like these reset weekly um, in general. Um, helps, I think, is okay if you want to keep helps all the way up top. But uh, again, I'd be fine. I just like that they've added something now. So we can now go off of some kind of in-game statistic to evaluate players a little more efficiently, especially when we're gauging activity, when we're trying to um, uh, figure out what positions we want to give someone if we want to promote, right? Love this addition. Uh, now let's go into the next one here, which is Mysterium Instruction added a detail Mysterium Instruction on the left interface of Mysterium. So I don't have Mysterium, so I can't actually show you this one uh, because my Pioneer account just isn't leveled that high. Uh, but again, giving at least some tool tips and some information on how to approach Mysterium, um, I still think is great. Uh, now let's get into the next point, which is daily mission. Added the mission of attacking gnome bosses. Okay, this is awesome. I think that's great. Just gives you another way to hit your 100 uh, faster and more consistently every day. Alliance gift. Added an entrance for checking and collecting alliance gifts. Big win. This is the winner, winner, chicken dinner addition to this update, right? Now, again, this is like kind of a mo money, mo problem situation because I say this coming from someone who's in an alliance where we have a lot of players that spend money. <laughs> in short, right? And there's a lot of gifts going on. And I'm sure other alliances, right, for top alliances in the servers, you guys probably have a similar thing happening as well. But when I can go in now and I can click on the gift tab, right, which they moved the log tab, which is just now over here, right? So it hasn't really moved that far. But now all the gifts that we receive come here. That means that now it's only going to be Alliance markers, Alliance males, and, and then any, like, you know, you've joined, change of leadership type things that you're going to be mainly seeing here. This means that hopefully there's going to be a big increase in players not missing out on Alliance males. I know this was something that quite a few people have talked about missing out on because of it's just markers, if it's gift purchases, right? You have the Alliance males getting pushed down and flooded, so it's hard for players to kind of go back every day and check on those, right? They would have to be kind of very diligent in paying attention. So great addition. I love it. Now let's talk about uh, Alliance help instruction, add an instruction about upper limit of Alliance helps. Um, so I think this is if we go to, let's see here. So if I click on speed up and then, oh, no, hang on. This is the helps thing. We have to go here. I got I have to remember how to get here. So helps, right? Tool tips, maximum number of responses after requ requesting help, right? So this is pretty cool. They just added a little tool tip here that you'll have information on. Now getting to the last thing, right, is we have the big adjustments, right? So the, the let me talk about the first one because the second one I might go into a little bit more. Mysterium adjusted the enemy skill. The first one, right? Now, now I don't know how this is going to play out. If it means that it's going to increase and make clearing Mysterium harder, if it's going to adjust it based on what your, you know, your primary march is. So, you know, will you now have to go in with, will you now have to go in picking more immortals up uh, because it's just going to be more difficult? Will it be a little easier? Again, we'll do a follow-up video on that. 
But the biggest thing I want to talk about, which is really what I mentioned in the beginning of the video, is the server migration portion here, right? So there's two extremely big changes they made to this, and I just want to talk about what the potential impacts are of this, right? And then I'll give you my opinion on it at the end. So Contention of Relics has been completed in the Chronicle. Uh, and, and, so let me start off there. There's three Contention of Relics, right? This means that, and again, the wording here isn't extremely specific. So I don't know if it means after the first round of Contention of Relics has been completed or after all three rounds of Contention of Relics has been completed in the Chronicles. My, uh, my thought is it probably is all three rounds because you could probably finish all three rounds before 90 days hits. So that makes a little more theoretical sense, but we don't specifically know because the wording wasn't that detailed. The, the, ne the next part portion here is at the end of the second sentence, which again, it still stays at 90 days plus. But the big, the big impactful part here is it says, and lords who have never reached 200,000 power can relocate to opening kingdoms. Now, I, 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 I will make a note. I did ask about this uh, for one of my contacts. Now, there's the chance maybe it's a typo, right? Maybe it could be 2 million power or it actually is 200,000 power. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give feedback on both sides of it. Uh, and before I do, I want to just say that I personally believe where they had the limit at, at 1 million power, was the sweet spot to start out with. Uh, based on server development progress that we've been seeing, I actually think 1 million power is extremely appropriate to start out with. Right? I would love for them to keep it at 1 million power at least for a while to see what the actual long-term impl implications and effects are of players migrating to and from servers. Because what you have to keep in mind is that at the moment, right, you only have, right, and, and I'll show you this here, right, how many servers are actually 90 days old? Let's go to, let me scroll here if we can, where am I at, six? Okay, so server six is 78 days old, server five is 120 days old. So you only have five servers right now that you can even migrate to, right? You gotta wait, what, 12 more days before you can migrate to S6? So in my opinion, leaving, leaving it up where, where it's at for one mil power, when you only have a small pool of servers that you can actually pull data from, no pun intended, right? It's just not enough, right? I think you leave it at one mil, you let it go for maybe the first 20, 30 servers, let those servers hit 90 days, right? And then you maybe give it about a month after that, right? See how the migration and the recruitment system is kind of going back and forth. And then after you have more data, then you can make an adjustment, right? Then you can say, okay, look, this is the information we pulled. This is feedback we've received. Now we can make a more informed decision, right? It, for how I view it. So let me talk about now what it does if we go to 200K. If it is 200K, the challenges with going to 200K is that you are now basically completely eliminating the idea of a migration ecosystem within your game, right? This is extremely impactful because it means that there's now no point in migrating to new servers. 200K is just not a high enough cap for people to, to do that, right? Because even for me, right, on, a, on like a very low spend account at the moment, Right, I'm at what 350, uh, what 350k, and our server in eight is what 50 something days old. We're 51. I still have four, I still have 39 more days before we hit 90. Right, and for free to play accounts, they're probably somewhere like high 200s, low 300s, uh, give or take. Right, if if not if not close to where I'm at. So if you think about how are the next 40 days going to go, yeah, I might increase another 150, 200k power. I would imagine I'll probably end up somewhere around you know, 500, somewhere between five and 600K, give or take, which I think is, is a decent range if you think about where a free-to-play account can be when 90 days hits, right? And, and there's other factors as well, right? Based on the alliance you're in, how many gifts are coming in your way as well, and other factors. But I think that's a, a decent range to hit at. So again, if you lower it to 200K, there's no point. There's just, why would anyone move a server, right? The better play at that time would just be to get a big group together and then just go join a new server, right? To try and have as much high activity as you can in a brand new server, right? And then retain that. Now, if it goes up to two mil, the, 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 the challenge then is that, and, and, and before I even go there, if you lower it to 200K, think about how many more players that are now stuck 
in their servers that can now not migrate out. Like, especially for people that were in beta servers one through set, one through eight, right? At least you gave the majority of players an opportunity to move out, right? Albeit any players that already reached one mil power and or are over that, right? So again, there's multiple implications here, right? I think one of the greatest things about what a game like Rise of Kingdoms and other kingdom builders do is they have a very thriving uh, migration-based ecosystem where you have players constantly going back and forth between kingdoms, right? That have hit those prerequisite requirements before you can go. And this just allows for a another layer of activity within your game, right? Which I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but now let me talk about the two mil. So if we up, if we bump it and we upgrade it to two mil, the challenge there is that now you're allowing for a, more or less any players that, because I don't even know, I, there might only be a few people that are over two mil, if that. I don't even know if anyone is over two mil. But what it means is that now you're going to allow players that are in older servers, right, to come to any other servers, right? And there's no threshold that you're really limiting, right? There's no deterrence, right? You could have players that are at 1.3, 1.5, 1.8 mil come into newer servers that are 90 days old, and they could just wreak havoc, right? And and you really couldn't do anything for the most part, right? Give or take um, uh, against them, right? It would it would just make it it would make it very difficult um, to, in my opinion, I think challenge, especially if they come in as a group, right? Um, but at the same time, I understand, right? I think there's ways to get around that, right? You could do something like what we've seen in Rise of Kingdoms where the king can set the pa- can set the, the cap, right? They can set the cap for the kingdom. I think that would be one way to fix it, right? Is you just give power to the king of the kingdom, right? And you let them set the, set the cap that they want, the, the, the power cap that, they, that they're willing to allow players into the kingdom at. And then you just let them set that however they want. They can set it at 500K, a million. They can set it at no cap, Right. I think that would be a great way to do it. Of course, it would change the system. But uh, uh, again, right, that could be one solution to it. Outside of that, like I said, I think the best solution is just keep it at one mil. I thought they hit that on the I I thought they hit the hammer on the head perfectly with starting at one mil. Um, anyways, guys, that's it for me. I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below, right, on anything I touched on. Do you agree? Do you disagree with my opinion uh, or anything else in between that I talked about in this video? The other thing I would say is that if you're someone who's planning to leave feedback and you agree that you think keeping it at one mil, right, add that into your questionnaire form when you fill that out across these five days going up to March 10th. Let them know that you'd like to keep it at one mil. I know I will, um, right? And then, of course, any other feedback that you guys have uh, in addition to submitting those bugs. And thanks, everyone, for who's joining the Pioneer Test Server to help out with improving the game overall. Uh, It is a big win, right? Especially when I think the devs come and ask us about those things and it gives us an opportunity to contribute in more ways than one. Can't go wrong with that. As always, guys, I'm BN. Check out our uh, check out any information that you want in our description down below. I'm out. Peace.